Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am back yet with another video and I am going to be talking about my top 10 favorite books of the first half of 2024. Basically my 10 favorite books that I read within the first six months of 2024. Does that make sense? The mid-year book tag. But let's talk about my top 10 favorite books. Listen, I have five physical with me and then the other five I read on my Kindle but I will if I see those books on sale, I'm running and I'm grabbing them because I need those in paperback form. I love these. I love these with my whole heart. And to be honest, it was really difficult to, to pinpoint 10 books, I think. By 1st of July, I read like 82 books. Whoa, that was a lot of books. I know. But um, I had to just choose 10. Like, that's criminal. Do you know what I mean? So you definitely know that I love these with my whole heart yeah let's just jump in i'm going to talk about the physical first i think and then we can just jump into the kindle books so the first one these are in no particular order whatsoever but red queen i absolutely love this is a fantasy young adult book and i'm glad i read this one first because in fairness this was so original all of the ideas i just haven't read anything like this and this came out back in Hold on, let me grab my phone and check. Okay, so this came out in 2015, right? So this was like nearly a decade ago. And while I was reading other books this year, I noticed that a lot of um, ideas were actually inspired from this book. At least Fort Wayne, Powerless, um, just other books that I read, you could really tell that this was the inspiration for other books. And um, so this is a commoner who ends up in the royal palace and there's powers, there's just everything, there's um, betrayal, there's friendship, there's love and I just, this definitely had the biggest shocker for me of betrayal and this was, was so good so I definitely highly highly recommend and I'm surprised because young adult, hello, um, I just, I don't normally love young adult books as much anymore but this one was definitely worth it and now the second one, A Little Life. Listen, listen, this is my favorite book of all time and I'm not exaggerating. Since last year I read over 200 books and I just, I kid you not, this is my all time favorite book. The way that this book made me sob, the way that this book made me cry and feel every single emotion that there is. You have this found family, the friendship between these four boys the way you know you get their backstories when they're in college when they meet and it's just so beautiful because you actually get to see and follow all of these like lives that they go on along in this journey and story and i i loved every single minute of it so it is lit thick and literary fiction tends to be a lot slower and until you get like towards the end where you kind of start to understand this a little bit more you will i don't know i just i find lit fics really slow but I love them so much, especially towards the end or when I finish the book and I'm like, damn, that was so good. Read this, please. Okay, first of all, read Trigger Warnings because this one was painful, brutal. And the last, I think, 100 pages, I just didn't know how to finish the book because it physically hurts so bad. I don't think you understand. Until you read this book, and one thing for sure, please do not read this in autumn time or winter when it's already, you know, sad and gloomy and depressing outside. Read this maybe in summertime because I read this in spring and if this was just like, bleh, can I speak? If this book was just, if this book was destroying me so badly in spring, I cannot imagine reading this winter or autumn. God help you. God help help you i'm not even exaggerating so this one i love with my whole heart so good also if you want to feel something a little life for sure is gonna make you feel every single thing <laughs> for sure um okay next is reckless by elsie silver so this is i think the third no this is the fourth book in the chestnut spring series um and so it follows long like there if you haven't heard of Chestnut Springs series, let me introduce you. So it's a series of interconnected books. You can read these as a standalone. 
but I obviously love the series. The first one I didn't really like as much and I just didn't see the hype, right? But in the first one you follow Summer and she has a sister named Winter. Summer and Winter, really. How original. But Summer has a sister named Winter and Winter in the first book was coming across very robotic, very cold-hearted person and I just I didn't think I would like her until I read this book and this book redeemed Winter. I related to so much to her as a single mom. This was such a beautiful story and the fact that pregnancy trope is never I feel like done as beautifully as this one. This one was just mind blowing and I love this. I had such a good time and it is spicy but it's a cowboy romance and Theo is just chef's kisses. I kid you not. I think about this book so much and it's, it's a beautiful story. So, highly recommend. Alright. Magdalene of Paris. I don't know where to start. Listen, if you can't tell, this is the third book that follows Magnolia Parks and it's a series again. But listen, if I was to recommend one series to anyone, it's Magnolia Parks. And the way that I love this series with my whole heart, with my just, with every piece, sorry, with every piece and bone and flesh of my body, I'm not exaggerating, I love this. The quality in this is like phenomenal i can just be sitting down and just picking up the series this, this book in particular and just reading and my heart aches because the way that's written is so beautiful i actually got to meet jessa hastings and um this is so beautiful she's one of my favorite authors ever 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 so she wrote down you are the love of a lifetime jessa so I just I can't describe how much I love this book and if you love Gossip Girl I feel like for sure you will love this and you will enjoy this and it's basically about this group of friends so you have found family and it's one of my favorite found family books to be ever written I absolutely love this actually there's a, I'm only noticing this now there's a strong outlier I don't know if it's the right word but one thing that these books have in common is found family tropes and i feel like i'm a sucker for them um but anyway it's this group of friendship and their social elites they have the money their social elites they have the status they have everything they're the it group they're the it girl and it boys like it's just one of those kind of books and i don't know like if it sounds lame but i just the jokes, the quotes, just everything about these books. I fell in love and yeah. But And then last but not least of my paperback stack, I have Powerless. And as I was saying, um, Red Queen is a big inspiration for this book. And I love this. I still think about this book and um, it's very similar. So there's trials in this book. And you know what? It still was original doesn't matter how many books I read about trials, they still are original. And this one was a lot more romance based. It's not like massively fantasy based, like yeah, they have powers, but I just, there's not a whole lot of world building. Like it's a really easy fantasy book to get through. You don't need brain cells. You don't need to kind of like, I don't know, think about things like super to every nitty gritty detail. Kai is a prince and he has a brother, Kit, and they're a family of royals, they're family of royals, that explains it really well, <laughs> but Hidden is a commoner and she has no powers but then she ends up saving Kai's life and so they, so they all partake in the trial. So, and the thing is, Hidden has no powers and she's not the only person. But she's in disguise because if someone has no powers, they think it's the plague. And um, so they basically try to send out Kai. And Kai is the enforcer, I believe. And he's the one who gets rid of everyone who has no powers. Because they're afraid that the plague is going to come after all the people who have powers, if that makes sense. And yeah, 
I, I love this. It's a young adult. Again, I'm surprised that I love the young adult book this much. Then we have Sona Meant to Be by Megan Quinn. And listen, she is the queen of rom-com books. Like, I have a good time reading every single book of hers that I read. And she just, I don't know, she makes her stories just so laughable. And I mean laughable out loud. It's those kind of stories. And again, this one is actually the second book in the series, but you can read them as a standalone. I read this one as a standalone. And um, it's basically about three Kane brothers. They're billionaires. They own a tech company, I think it was. And so there's a lot of good tropes in this one. And they actually have a workplace relationship. And he loves this girl. But this girl does not want anything to do with him because she thinks he's a player. And yeah. And it's really sweet because you can see how when they do try to become friends because it's friendship to... No, it's not friendship. It's friends to lovers. So you do get to see that kind of, I don't know, different side of them. And you see how she kind of starts struggling with her feelings. She's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Which is, I, I don't know. I really love this book and I have so much fun reading it. Next one is super short. This one is and and the way home... And every morning the way home gets longer and longer. The title is Long and Long. This one was the first book that I read by Frederick Bachman. And it's really short and this broke my heart at the end. A book about a grandparent and you get to see how they're struggling with... What was it that they struggled with? Alzheimer's? Um, I think it was dementia or Alzheimer's. It was one or the other. But as a person who has a grandparent that struggles with it as well, um, it was breaking my heart. And you, the way that he told the story is you were following the story and then suddenly that ending. And if you do like poetry kind of lyrical writing style, then Frederick Bachman is the one for you. Um, one thing I will say, Jesse Hastings, Frederick Bachman, Olive Blake, um, they're those authors that I think of for lyrical, poetical writing styles and that's why I love these authors so much. And you can definitely see that they're just so talented. The next book is Icebreaker. Now listen, I know that Icebreaker gets so much hate and everyone is a hater for Icebreaker. But I personally am in the minority. I love that book so much and it's definitely better than wildfire which is the second book in the series again a standalone if you want to read as a standalone but i thought it was like so much i don't know and a lot of people were like saying oh this is just pure spice listen i've read pure spicy books that was not it you get the found family trope again and this one is just so strong and as you get to meet all the hockey boys and you get to, I don't know, you see there was like so much banter in the book as well and I just really really enjoy this one um, so it's a hockey and ice skater who doesn't love it I don't know, I just thought it was sweet and wholesome for the moments that were sweet and wholesome but then for the spicy scenes, spicy scenes were good, they were really good then the next book is Retreat by Emily Henry and Retreat made me fall in love with Emily Henry's writing style I read Happy Place, I I couldn't tell you what the hype was about, couldn't tell you. However, um, Beach Read was everything I needed and more. Again, I don't know what was the deal with the names again, January and August. I kind of worked though, it did. At first it did kind of cringe me out, I was just like really really what are we doing here but um the writing style definitely stood out to me the most uh the plot was good basically two authors make a deal they make a pact and they're rivals from college and they end up living next door to one another so um it's funny because you see the whole process of them writing books and it's funny because they're going through their own writing slump where they're not sure i don't know i think it was because it really reminded me of abby jimenez and I love Abby Jimenez books. I think they're really good and I think that's what it reminded me of so much. Maybe that's why. I need to read more of her books, that's for sure. But other than that, I had no complaints with the book. Loved it, enjoyed it, highly recommend. And then last but not least, we have Along With You in the Ether. Yes, Along With You in the Ether. I love this book and I cannot describe. See, I have this thing where I, 
I have a book at the top of each genre, right? Lit fic, A Little Life, hands down. Uh, Magnolia Parks for my favorite series of all time. And then as for my favorite romance literary fiction, it's a long you in the guitar, hands down. I love this book, I devour devoured this, but it's short. It's really short and it got me out of my reading slump and um, it's one of those books that I really, really related to. Um, the author did a great job at portraying what it's like being in a relationship. When you love someone, all the fights, the things you go through and I don't know, I just... I could be reading the quotes in that book forever and ever and ever. I wouldn't get sick of them at all. I don't remember exactly but I think this was an interesting twist on the relationship because one of them I think had ADHD. Um, so she has bipolar. She's the kind of person who is a liar but she sabotages things or self-sabotages things and I don't know, I just... I kind of saw parts of myself in the relationship that they had. This book is just nothing that I've ever read. The writing style was just so unique. I absolutely loved it and I just think it's absolute masterpiece. Highly recommend. And it's funny because one of my friends read the book because uh, I recommended it and she thought there was just so much waffle in the book and I thought every single page was necessary. I was just one of those people and I was just like, no. If you talk bad against my baby, we will have a problem. But I loved it. I, I loved it. But um, yeah, these are... Ha! Ah, my finger! The heart. Anyways, these are the 10 books that I read and highly recommend. And my favorite books. I feel like some of these have really gotten a special place in my all-time favorite books. Surprisingly, we've had a good year and among all the other mid kind of books, we have these and these are just a golden nugget. These are masterpieces and I love these. But let me know what are your top 10 favorite books that you've read in 2024 so far. Do we have any in common? But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.